Good evening, everybody. This is Pastor Green. Welcome to our weekly Bible study. We're so elated to have you with us tonight. We are in the book of Exodus, chapter 16, 17, and 18 tonight. Some good stuff, more good stuff. This, uh, this book is, uh, it reads like a novel. I mean, it's, a, it's an adventure story. And um, looks like every time God gets to the children of Israel get in one piece of mess and God get them out of it. He just keeps <laughs> over and over again, regardless of how bad they are, God always comes through. Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity to share the word one more time. So we ask you right now for clarity of mind and thought that we may apprehend these great truths, that we can apply to our lives and become better soldiers of the cross. So we thank you, we praise you, we magnify your name tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, chapter 16 is very familiar. Even if you don't know the text, you do know the story. Um, the children of Israel are into the wilderness. They have eluded, they have escaped the, the wrath of the Egyptians. God has destroyed the army of Pharaoh. And the children of Israel are going through the desert on their way to the promised land. And um, God has to deal with them right now to get them ready for the promised land. One thing about it, now God ain't going to leave you the way you are. But the children of Israel were such a mess. The... Uh, after all those years in Egypt, they had, picked, <coughs> they had picked up a lot of bad habits. They had adopted the ways of the Egyptians. And Egypt is a type of the world system. Egypt is a, uh, it's a, uh, what's the best way to put it, Tom? Representative of the world system and the, the, the sin of the world. So, uh, um, the, the devil is the prince of the power. He's the ruler. He is the prince of the power of the air. And uh, the devil had Egypt under his grip. And as the children of Israel lived there for 400 years, they had picked up a lot of bad ways. And in order for them to get to the promised land and be the people of God that God uh, wanted them to be, he had, they had to go through a, a purging of these bad ways, these bad thoughts. And a lot of the folk who left Egypt weren't going to make it to the promised land. They had to qualify. And at this point, they weren't qualified. And we see just how bad they were as they, when they, they get through as they are, are faced with things in the wilderness. So all of us come out of the wilderness and we pick up a lot of mess in the wilderness. And, and as we are exposed to more mess in the wilderness, our true character shows and God has to straighten us out. And here we are in verse uh, chapter 16, verse 1. And they took their journey from Elam, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came unto the wilderness of sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month after the departing out of the land of Egypt. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. Write that down. Put a pen right there. Because you're going to keep seeing this over and over again. They murmur against Moses and Aaron. They got a problem with authority. They got a problem with biblical leadership. And whenever a people have a problem with biblical leadership, all you do is create problems for yourself. And if you don't believe me, just open the newspaper. Cut the TV on. Uh, as our society gets away from God, we create a lot of problems for ourselves. And the children of Israel are the example for us to, to learn from right now in this day. So here they are. 
They are. They have. Uh, uh, God has, by His mighty hand, has delivered them from the Egyptian tyranny. They're in the wilderness, but they got to go through this cleansing process. And the children of Israel said unto them, Would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the flesh pots, when we did eat bread to the full, for you have brought us forth into the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. So here it is now. You honestly believe, well, they, they live pretty good in Egypt for a while. The, the ones that are alive right now didn't. They, the, 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 the generation before them did. Because there arose the Pharaoh who knew not Joseph. So up until then, the prior generation lived pretty good. But that generation that was up that was under bondage, that was under hard labor, that was under rigor, they caught hell. Now, some of them uh, uh, experienced that transition from uh, 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 people uh, who were welcome addition in Egypt to those that were under bondage. Mm -hmm. And their last days under bondage were not good. They cried out to the Lord because of, uh, of the, the rigor that they were placed under. So here it is, they're in the wilderness and... and uh, at, and they, they barely growling. They're in the desert. There ain't no food. But God finished show up. Then God then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. Uh, the bread of heaven. He's going to rain bread from heaven, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or not. This is all approving ground for, for God. He's just testing them. You, you see, they stayed 40 years in the wilderness. Now, that was a 10-day march. But because they flunked this test, they had to stay in the, in the wilderness for 40 years. Every chance they got, they just murmured mm -hmm. and whined. You think God like whiners? No. And it shall come to pass that on the sixth day they shall prepare that which they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. So basically, you gather enough for one day, but on the sixth day you gather enough for two days. Because God is trying to uh, establish the, the, the Sabbath for them. Because remember now, when they were in Egypt, and uh, God told uh, uh, Pharaoh, let my people go so that they can serve me. All God ever wanted them to do was to serve him. Mm -hmm. So he, they would be his people and he would be their God. Mm -hmm. So he's getting them ready. This, the, the, uh, um, they needed to be purged of the, the wicked ways. They needed to be purged of their idolatry. They needed to be purged from all the bad stuff they learned from the Egyptians so that they can serve God the way God wants to be served, the way he deserves it. And Moses and Aaron said unto the children of Israel at even, then ye shall know that the Lord had brought you out from the land of Egypt. Now, you, you already know that, but he's going to he, he show you something fantastic now. And in the morning, then you shall see the glory of the Lord, for that he heareth your murmurings against the Lord. And what are we that ye murmur against us? Uh, this is what the, uh, uh, Moses said. Y'all think you're murmuring against us. You're murmuring against God. Mm -hmm. They don't see that part. And Moses said, this shall be when the Lord shall give you in the evening flesh to eat, and in the morning full bread to the full, for that the Lord heareth your murmurings which ye have murmured against him. And what are we? Your murmurings are not against us, but against the Lord. And Moses spake unto the Aaron, Say unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he hath heard your murmuring. Now you notice how Moses speaks to Aaron. 
And Aaron addresses the people. Remember now, Moses taught him. You know, he, he, he's a Geechee. He, he don't talk that, that good. So, he, uh, so that they will listen. He has, he gives the message to Aaron, and Aaron gives the message to the people. Well, guess what? God speaks to the pastor. And the, the pastor speaks to the people. That same method is used to this day. It's all, all they're doing is showing us and with the Old Testament church, the children of Israel represented the Old Testament church mm -hmm. and all it's doing is showing us a pattern for the New Testament church. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel speak unto them, saying, At evening ye shall eat flesh, and in the morning ye shall be filled with bread, and ye shall know that I am the Lord your God. And it shall come to pass that even the quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning dew lay round about the host. And when the dew lay, when the when the dew that lay was gone up, behold, upon the face of the wilderness there lay a small round thing, as small as a hoar frost on the ground. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, It is manna. But they wished not what it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord hath given you to eat. My goodness. Now guess what? When I, I, I when you look at this, the first thing comes to my mind is John chapter 6. When uh, Jesus, uh, 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 John chapter 6, verse 31 says, Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, and it's written, He had gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread which from heaven, but my father giveth you the true bread from heaven, which is Jesus himself. Do you see, the manna is a, is a, a foreshadowing of Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh. Guess what? The Word of God is to be consumed, mm -hmm. just like the manna. Mm -hmm. Okay? The Word of God is to be consumed, and it is a type, pointing the children of Israel, getting them ready for when the true bread comes in the New Testament church, in the person and work of Jesus Christ. And this is the thing which the Lord has commanded. Gather of it every man according to his eating, and almost for every man according to the number of your persons. Take ye every man for them which are in his tents. And the children of Israel did so, and gathered some more, some less. And when they did meet it out with an omer, he that gathered much had nothing over, and he that gathered little had no lack. They gathered every man according to his eating, and Moses said, Let no man leave of it till morning. Eat it all. Mm -hmm. Don't save nothing. Mm -hmm. this, is a, this is a test now. Mm -hmm. He's giving them instructions. They needed to get uh, uh, be purged of their old habits to learn how to trust God mm -hmm. and not their own wits. See, their, their natural tendency would be to hoard. Their natural tendency, because, you know, they, they're just selfish, uh, stingy people. Uh, uh, they're going to hoard it all, and uh, they're going to keep some for themselves, and they ain't going to get nobody else none. That's how they are. Mm -hmm. Notwithstanding, they hearken not unto Moses, but some of them left of it until the morning, and it bred worms and stank, and Moses was wroth with them. See, they done flunked the test already. Moses said, don't try to hoard it. Eat what you can. And uh, what you don't eat, you give it to somebody else. But don't try to save it. Don't try to hoard it. So those that, some of them just didn't pay no attention. They stuck to their natural tendencies. And when they, the stuff that they tried to stash, they woke up the next morning and it had worms in it and it was stink. They couldn't eat it no way. And it came to pass that on the sixth day they gathered twice as much Two almost for one man, and all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses, and he said unto them, This is that which the Lord has said, Tomorrow is the day of the holy, the rest of the holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that which ye bake today, and see that which ye see, and that will remain it over, lay up for you to be kept till the morning. And they laid it up 
until the morning as Moses bathed, and it did not stink, neither was there worm, any worms therein. And Moses said, Eat that today, for today is the Sabbath unto the Lord. Today you shall you shall not find it in the field. So, so there, there was, when you go out in the field, there ain't going to be none. So, you, so, so on the sixth day, there's going to be, a, you, you, you gather enough for the sixth day, the last two days. Because uh, uh, on the Sabbath rest, we won't do no work. And it, when you go out there, there ain't going to be none. And it came to pass that, as, that there went out some of the people on the seventh day for together, and they found none. Guess what? He's already told them there wasn't going to be none. Yeah. This is a test. On the seventh day, it wasn't going to be none. They don't even go out there looking for it. Well, some of them look for it anyway. Those are the ones that flunked the test. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long refuse ye to keep my commands, my commandments, and my laws? See, for that the Lord hath given you the Sabbath. Therefore, he giveth you the sixth day, the bread of two days. Abide ye every man in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. He is trying to get them into the habit of the Sabbath rest. That has to be part of who you are. It might not have been who you was, but in order to serve me the way I want to be served, this is how you got to do it. See, we can't just serve God any old kind of way. God is not impressed with, with our vain worship. This is going to be the same problem that we're going to deal with, that they're going to deal with thousands of years later. Vain worship. They're going to become a, 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 a real religious group of people, but their worship was vain. <laughs> so the people rested on the seventh day. And the house of Israel called the name thereof manna, and it was like coriander seed, white, and the taste of it like wafers with honey, made with honey. <laughs> uh, sound like uh, cornflakes. <laughs> And Moses said, this is the thing which the Lord commanded. Feel an omen to be kept for your generation that you may see the bread where you have fed you in the wilderness when I brought you forth from the land of Egypt. And Moses said to Aaron, take a pot and fill an omer full of manna therein and lay it before the Lord to be kept for your generations. And the Lord commanded Moses, so Aaron laid it up before the testimony to be kept. And the children of Israel did eat manna forty years until they came to a land inhabited. They did eat manna until they came into the borders of the land of Canaan. Now an omer is a tenth of an ephah. An ephah is roughly about a basket. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a general measure. Like we have a, a, a box of uh, oranges, a, a, a bushel. So an ephah was like a bushel, but uh, an omer was like one tenth of that. And, and uh, uh, he was just trying to teach them these principles that God provides. Mm -hmm. Trust God. Amen. Don't trust yourself. Mm -hmm. Trust God. See, his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. We got to learn how to trust God. Sometimes God tells us to do stuff that don't make sense to us. Trust God. So the bread from heaven. But those murmuring folk. Now, let's go to chapter 17. We're going to check these jokers out again. And all the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin and their journeys according to the commandment of the Lord and pitched at Rephidim and there was no water for the people to drink. Okay, now chapter 16, they have no food. God gave them that. Now they done got to another place where it wasn't no water. Okay, and they murmured again. Wherefore the people did chide with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moses said unto them, What chide ye with me? Wherefore do ye tempt the Lord? And the people thirsted there for water, and uh, the, the people murmured against Moses and said, Wherefore is this 
that thou hast brought us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst. Boy, look here. There's something else, ain't there? Okay? Uh, you know, that's like you said, they were thirsty and they're just complaining. They were saying, why are you going to bring us out of Egypt? And you know, brought us and our cattle and our cows so we can die without water. That's basically what they're saying. And Moses cried to the Lord saying, what shall I do unto this people? They'd be almost ready to stone me. They're ready to kill me, Lord. Now, now, now what you going to do? And the Lord said to Moses, go on before the people and take with thee of the elders of Israel and of thy rod wherewith thou smotest the river, take it to thy hand and go. Now, he said, the, whole, the same rod that you stuck in the, the river when you spoke, when you, when, you made, when you walked through dry land, mm -hmm. take that same rod, take it with you, mm -hmm. take some of the elders with you. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to show you something. Behold, I will stand before thee, there upon the rock in Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come out of it that the water that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel, and he called the name of the place Massa and Meribah <coughs> because of the chiding of the children of Israel, because they tempted the Lord, saying, Is the Lord not among us or not? So here it is. These jokers. They uh they 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 just trying God every step of the way. Uh, uh, this this lack of faith. God done brought them out of Egypt with a strong hand. He done fed them in the in the wilderness when there wasn't no food. Now he's gonna give them water. But before before God acts, now why can't y'all just come to God and say, Lord, you know what we need? Be humble. You know God gonna provide. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Boy, I tell you, there's something else. Mm -hmm. So you know, Moses smoked the rock, <coughs> and the water came flowing from the rock. Verse 8. And at rest of them, the Amalekites came and fought against the Israelites. Mm -hmm. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men and go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. That's the same rod. The rod of God. Boy, look at him. <laughs> so Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses and her went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hands that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hands, Amalek prevailed. Now, he's going to show us the principle. Y'all really need to get this part. When Moses hands us up, the children of Israel were winning the fight. When his arms got tired and his hands went down, then uh, the children of Israel were losing the fight. Okay? Now, guess what? Moses and Aaron and Hur were there. And Moses' hands were heavy, and they took up a stone and put it under him, and he sat there on. So basically what they did, they got this stone and said, okay, well Moses, you sit on the stone, hold up this, and they uh, one got on one side and one got on the other side. Moses' hands had to be on the, on, on the rod. Mm -hmm. They couldn't hold the rod. They didn't have no power, but the power worked through Moses. So Aaron on one side and her on the other side, and they held up Moses' hands. Mm -hmm. Now guess what? Uh, every pastor wants somebody who's going to help hold up his hands. Boy, look at him. You know, you know, you know I'm going to tell you something about church folks. They just sit around and let the pastor do all the work and won't, won't do nothing. The principle, that's why the pastor had deacons. So, you know, when I, before I became a preacher, I was a deacon and part of my training, and we, we learned this. The deacon's job is to hold up the pastor's hands. Mm -hmm. So he can throw the work. So God's work can be done in the ministry. Mm -hmm. You can always need some people to hold up your hand. Because you can't get the work done in your own power. God's power working through people. Come on, y'all. Somebody help me. Okay? But Moses' hands were heavy and they took up the stone and they put it under him. And he sat there on. And Aaron and her stayed up his hands. 
the one on one side and the other on the other side and his hands were fed into the going down of the sun and Joshua discomfited Amalek and the people with the edge of the sword and the Lord said unto Moses write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua for I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven and Moses built an altar and called the name of it boy y'all go like this Jehovah Nisi which literally means the Lord our banner. For he said, because the Lord has sworn, because the Lord has sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. he, he, he lifted up his hands toward the Lord's stone and basically to the, toward the Lord's throne so that the Lord fought against the Amalekites as he always has. Boy, look at him. The Lord our banner. Now we get to chapter 18. Uh, chapter 18, we, we are reintroduced to a man by the name of Jethro. Jethro was Moses' father-in-law who was a priest of Midian. Now, years ago, when I first started studying this, I, I didn't really understand the priesthood of of Jethro. Because there was a time when I actually thought Jethro might have been a pagan priest. Because the Levitical priesthood was not established yet. But this is a, just like just like Melchizedek preceded the Levitical priesthood. There were always priests of God. God had always been calling people to his service. And uh, the Midianites were not Jews. But they, these were people that God had revealed himself to. God revealed himself to a lot of people. They did not all understand God's plan. And, that they, and, and paganism was prevalent in a lot of cultures. But this, the priest of Midian, he, he, he predated the Levitical priesthood, just like Melchizedek predated the, the Levitical priest, priesthood. But he was not a pagan priest. He didn't have all the ritualism of the, the, of the Levitical priesthood, but God accepted his worship. God spoke through him to those people. And at this time, God is going to speak through him to Moses and will give him some advice that's going to serve Moses the rest of his days. Check this out. Then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, took Zipporah, Moses' wife, after he had sent her back now, when he had went back to Egypt, he had gone to get, um, uh, got hooked up with, with uh, Aaron. He had sent his wife back to, when, when he went to Pharaoh, he didn't bring his wife with him. He sent his wife back to her daddy mm -hmm. with the children. So now when they on their way to the wilderness, um, Jethro met, met up with him. He brought his wife and children back to him. Well, he's supposed to, mm -hmm. which is what a father-in-law is supposed to do. Get your child, get your, your daughter and your grandkids and get them back to their daddy. That's what he did. Mm -hmm. and, and her two sons, of which the name of one was Gershom, <laughs> For he said, I have been an alien in a strange land, and the name of the other was Eleazar, for the God of my father said, he was mine help and delivered me from the sword of Pharaoh. So he, he, he named these boys based on a prophecy of their life. And Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, came with his sons and his wife unto Moses in the wilderness, where he encamped at the mouth of God. And, and he said unto Moses, I thy father-in-law Jephthah and come unto thee and thy wife and her two sons. And Moses went out, went out to meet his father-in-law and did obeisance and kissed them. And they asked each other of their welfare and they came into the tent. And Moses told his father-in-law all that the Lord had done unto Pharaoh and the Egyptians for Israel's sake and all the travail that had come upon them by the way and how the Lord had delivered them. 
And Jethro rejoiced for all the goodness which the Lord had done to Israel, whom he had delivered out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Jethro said, Blessed be the Lord who has delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of Pharaoh, who have delivered the people from under the hand of the Egyptians. Now I know, look here, look at verse 11. Now I know that the Lord is greater than all gods, for in the thing wherein they de dealt proudly, he was above them. He was above them. And Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, took a burnt offering and sacrifices for God and came to Aaron and all the elders of Israel to eat bread with Moses' father-in-law before God. Now here it is. This is, a, this is a testament to Jethro. See, you know, somehow or another, 40 years ago, I, I missed this. Thinking that Jethro was some kind of pagan... Uh, um, priests like um, like the, the priests that worship Baal and, uh, uh, and, and, and Astaroth and Canaan. No, that wasn't the case with Jethro. Jethro was, he predated the Levitical priest, but he was not in error. He knew the real, he knew the true God. And, and if there was ever any misconception about his understanding of God, it was cleared up right here. When, when Moses came and told him what God had done, he was absolutely certain of all. He, he might have believed in other gods. But from that point on, it, that was, he was absolutely certain that the God of Israel was the true God. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses sat to judge the people, and the people stood by Moses from morning into evening. And when Moses' father-in-law saw all that he did to the people, he said, what is this thing that thou doest to the people? Why sittest thou thyself alone, and all the people stand by thee morning unto evening? Jethro is going to give him some advice that's going to help him the rest of his day. He's going to teach him the art of delegating authority. Mm -hmm. And he's also going to teach him a, a rule of, of, of organizational leadership. Uh, you can't do it all by yourself, so don't try. And Moses said unto his father-in-law, Because the people come unto me to inquire of God. When they have a matter, they come unto me, and I judge between one and another, and I do make them know the statutes of God and his laws. And Moses' father-in-law said unto him, The thing that thou doest is not good. They will surely wear away both thou and this people that is with thee, for this thing is too heavy for thee. Thou art not, a thou art not able to perform thyself alone. Hearken now unto my voice, I will give thee counsel, and God shall be with thee. Be thou for the people to God work, that thou mayest bring the causes unto God. Uh, in other words, he said, listen to me. Uh, let me give you some advice. I pray God will be with you. You should continue to listen to the problems of people. You should continue to speak to God about these things. That's what he's telling him. Uh, talk to God about it. Now, you're right about that, but you can't do it all by yourself. Look what he said. Now, if thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws, and shalt show them the way wherein they must walk, and the work that thou must do, moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able, able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands, and rulers of hundreds, and rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. He's giving you organizational leadership, Organiz or, or theory. When I was in college, we took a, 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 a if you're in a, 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 a business administration program, you're going to take organization theory. you got to learn how to organize, organize many people. You have to, you have, they have to, in order to get work accomplished, you have to break it down into smaller pieces and have everything coordinated together. One man can't do it all. I think it was, um, um, who was it? One of these pictures I studied over the years, um, Charles Haddon Spurgeon, that was his name. Spurgeon said he'd rather do He'd rather put a thousand men to work than to try to do the work of a thousand men. 
So you try to do it all by yourself, you're going to wear yourself out. And that's what, that's what J- Jethro is telling Moses. You know, he said, you find you some people and you teach them. Mm-hmm. And they teach the people. Uh, guess what? The, 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 great, the big mega churches, you know how they do it? They, they break the church up into small groups. Uh, even the, the smaller churches, they, 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 the Sunday school is divided into age groups. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have, um, you, if they, depending on the size of your congregation, you break it up according to what's necessary. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you, you know, in the Baptist church, they assign uh, the deacons, uh, and then other uh, uh, denominations do something similar. Uh, they, they divide the congregation up into wards. Mm-hmm. I have ward leaders. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 some congregations have associate pastors that are over certain areas of ministry. Mm-hmm. One man, the senior pastor can't do it all. Mm-hmm. So you, you teach the associate pastors, you teach those under you, Everybody's speaking the same message now. Mm-hmm. Everybody's speaking the word of God. You don't go off on one doctrine and somebody else teaching something else. No, you, 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 you're preaching and teaching the same thing. So you teach them and they'll teach the people. They will judge the people. So basically what he's doing, he is breaking it up. He said, let them judge the people at all seasons, and it shall be. That every great matter they shall bring unto thee, but every small matter they shall judge. So it shall be easier for thyself, and they shall bear the burden with thee. You let somebody else help you, Moses. You get some capable people, God-fearing people. You get some old folks saved. You don't get no heathens doing this because it don't work. You don't get greedy people who are going to steal. You don't, it won't work. Uh, you, you 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 have to get people who are like-minded, mm-hmm. who are faithful, who have integrity, mm-hmm. and assign these duties to them. Mm-hmm. That it, that was good advice to Moses. Mm-hmm. That's good advice today. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, uh, and if you if you look in, in fact, let me just kind of turn there right quick. I'm going to jump to Titus. And uh, here's he, he, Titus, uh, 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 no, no, not Titus. First, well, Titus also, 1 Timothy chapter 3. This is the true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desires the good work. The bishop must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy or filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous, one that rules well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. This is the advice for a the qualifications of a, of a pastor, a bishop, or uh, uh, the, the one, the overseer of a church. Then uh, the down, go down into uh, verse 8. He says, Likewise, must the deacons be grave, not double tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy or filthy local, holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. Let these also be first proved, then let them use the office of a deacon being found blameless. So th- this is the same principle here. So when you start uh, appointing pastors, you want them using, with that same category, you start, you organize your church, you want deacons Mm -hmm. who can hold up the pastor's hands so the work can get accomplished. Mm -hmm. Did that make sense? Mm -hmm. And, And Verse 18, Thou wilt surely wear away both thou and this people that is with thee, for this thing is too heavy for thee, and thou art not able to perform it thyself alone. Hearken now unto my voice, I will give thee counsel, and God shall be with thee. For thou, be thou for the people to God work, 
and that thou mayest bring the causes to God, and thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws, and shalt show them the way wherein they must walk, and work, and, uh, and the work that they must do. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and placing such over them to be rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of ten. And let them judge the people at all seasons, and it shall be that every great matter they shall bring to thee, and every small matter, uh, every small matter they shall judge, so that it be easier for thyself, and they, they shall bear the burden with thee. Verse 23, And if thou shalt do this thing, and God command thee so, then thou shalt be able to endure, and all the people shall also go to their place in peace. So Moses hearkened to the voice of his father-in-law and did all that he said. And Moses chose able men out of all Israel and made them heads over the people, rulers of thousands, rulers of fifties, rulers of uh, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, rulers of ten, and they judged the people at all seasons. And the hard causes they brought unto Moses, but every small matter they judged themselves. And Moses let his father in law depart, and he went his way into his own land. And I, uh, guess what? Jethro didn't stick around. Jethro gave him his 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 advice and left it up to him to do it. He didn't go meddling. He didn't hang around because he had his own work to do. Uh, there was a revelation given him to Jethro, and he had to go back and do it where he was. Now, let me tell you something about this, this group that he had put together. This was the precursor to the Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin was the same group some thousands of years later that called for the destruction of Jesus. See, they started out with, good, uh, with a good purpose. But being the people that they were, they got so religious, they forgot about God. Mm -hmm. But they started out with a good purpose. Mm -hmm. See, what happens when you get the wrong people, you know, time is, um, you can get the right people. Mm -hmm. and, and over time, they evolve into something else. Mm -hmm. the, the ones who started were the right people. But uh, 500 years later, who was left, they weren't quite as judicious as their, as their predecessors. I mean, you think uh, 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 the, a, a, a people are subject to devolve as, as you get out of uh, God's hand and start doing things your way you get you're doing less and less uh, according to the biblical mandate and more and more like uh, the world system uh, the influence of uh, godliness is going to wane in how you conduct God's business and before you know it you're going to be doing it your way not God's way but, but, uh, but Jethro gave him that advice and Moses kept his father-in-law's advice, mm -hmm. and he was able to get the work done. But that, now that didn't stop them from being who they was, because that, that that group that came out of Egypt, some a whole lot of them were not going into the Promised Land. Mm -hmm. In fact. Mm -hmm. Everybody, most of them, fell by the wayside mm -hmm. in the wilderness. They were not qualified to go into the promised land. Mm -hmm. But in order for them to get qualified, God had to break the, the he, he, they had to be ministered to on their level. Mm -hmm. That's why you saw uh, rulers of thousands, mm -hmm. rulers of hundreds, Rulers of fifties and rulers of ten. 
Some people need to be in a smaller group because they needed the more, more work. Mm -hmm. Some people could operate in a group of a thousand. Some people could operate in a group of 500. Mm -hmm. Some people had span of control issues where you couldn't handle no more than 10 people. Some people, well, they, they got organizational skills, they can handle a thousand. Mm -hmm. And that's the way it works. Okay? Now, we're going to pick up next time at chapter 19. And this is where some real good stuff getting ready to happen. Uh, Israel at Mount Sinai, chapter 19. We're going to do 19, 20, and 21 next time. We basically three chapters each section, each session. Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity to stand before your children one more time. So we ask you right now to continue to keep us in the hollow of your hand. Continue to uh, let your light shine, let your wisdom uh, rain upon us. Touch our eyes that we might see your glory. Touch our hands that we might do the work that you set before us. Touch our hearts that we might receive from you. So we thank you, we praise you, and we ask it all in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Uh, we'll see you next time, uh, chapter 19. That's where we're going to begin next Wednesday night at um, 7.20. Uh, we see you on Sunday morning at 10.15. We're still going through the Gospel of Mark. Um, we're somewhere in chapter 7. Um, as God gives it to me, I give it to y'all, and I'm not holding nothing back. Uh, now, if you want to, if you, if you are blessed by this teaching, blessed by the ministry, and you want to be a blessing to the ministry, you may do so. Uh, you can give it, a gift of any amount. Now, y'all see this uh, background where we are now. One of these days, the Lord is going to, this year, in 2024, I'm believing God that he is going to give us a, a building that we can really do great things with. Somebody is going to find out. They're gonna, I'm gonna, uh, uh, somebody going to send me a, a messenger by uh, a Facebook message and say, uh, Pastor Green, I understand you're looking for a building. I got this empty building I'm going to let you get for a dollar a month. I'm, 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 I'm going to bleed God for that. And somebody going somebody gonna to call me with a building that's sitting empty, that they want to be a blessing to the kingdom because they know that if I get that building, I'm going to do great things with God's help and God's people. So it's going to happen. It's gonna, something's going to happen this year. So uh, we're getting ready to move. But if you want to be a part of that, you can give a Gift of any amount, dollar sign green WL on Cash App, Zell 689-246-5892. Uh, don't be stingy. You're showing a good ground. I think you already know that. And um, uh, I'm going to be faithful because I know God is faithful. We'll see y'all next time. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, to turn his faultless before his throne with exceeding great joy, the only true and wise God, and the glory, majesty, dominion, and power. Now and forever, and all of God's people said, Amen.